So this is one of my favorite things. How do you start the infinite banking concept? You know, at the end, end of every single video that I do, I say, I wanna teach you how to become your own bank. But what does that even mean? You hear me say BYOB, normally I have it right on my shirt. But what does BYOB mean? It doesn't always mean bring your own beer or bring your own babe. In this context, it means be your own bank. And that's exactly what this video is gonna do. I'm gonna teach you what the infinite banking concept is. I normally have a shirt on that says BYOB, but you know what, I just brought a hat today. So right there, BYOB. So let's dive into this. The infinite banking concept, what is it? You've probably heard about it or maybe you haven't, but what you've probably heard is not correct. What a lot of people think it is, is they think it's a product. The infinite banking concept is not a product, it is a process. And that is the single most important thing you must understand. There's a huge difference between a product and a process, but I understand most people, their minds wanna focus on a product. A process, they're just thinking, oh, well, what is that? Let me give you an example. When you go to the grocery store and you're looking at Campbell's soup, let's just pick on chicken noodle soup. You see the can, that's the product. It's got the pretty label, the logo, the red and the white with a little bit of gold. You know exactly what I'm talking about. So you grab that. How many times do you actually think about the process that went into making that chicken noodle soup? Did you focus on the process before you bought the product? No. When you got home and you opened it up and you poured it in the pan or the pot, you probably then thought, hmm, I wonder how they make this. But it wasn't the first thing you started with, which is why the first thing you think about when you think about the infinite banking concept is a whole life insurance policy. But that's a misconception. Matter of fact, the infinite banking concept is very simple. Here's what it is. It is the process of you taking back the banking functions in your life. Does that make sense? Think of all the banking functions you do. If you owned a bank, would you make deposits in somebody else's bank? Of course not. You'd make deposits in your own bank. If you owned your own bank and you needed a loan for a car, would you go to the bank down the street and get a loan from a competitor? No, you'd get a loan from your bank, wouldn't you? Of course you would, it's your business. And if you owned a bank, when you took that loan out, would you pay your bank back monthly payments of principal and interest? Of course you would, because why? You would have paid somebody else's bank principal and interest payments without even asking a question. That's just the way it is. So when we talk about taking back the banking functions in your life, it's that simple. Put the hat on, change your mindset, act and mimic what a bank does. Everything that you do with a bank, just do it with your own bank. It's that simple. Don't overcomplicate this. What is your bank? Now we're gonna to go to the product. Your bank, where the money gets deposited, is a specially designed and engineered whole life insurance policy from a mutually owned company that pays dividends if I'm gonna get specific. We call it the machine. It's the main point of focus, but it really shouldn't be because the process is where you're gonna become wealthy. The product, the machine, which is the whole life, is just a place where we put money in and take that money right back out. So if you owned a bank, would you just want people to make deposits and then that money sits in the vault? I, I don't know if you know this, but let me break some truth to you. Banks have no money in the vault. The next time you walk into your bank, ask them if you can see how much money's in the vault. They may not show you, but I want you to know there's no money back in there. So when you're sitting in the bank and you see those armored guards from Brinks carrying in those bags of money, that's all an illusion. They just want you to think there's money in the vault. There's not. Because if a bank and your bank just put money into the vault and never did anything, your bank would go out of business. Now, I'm not saying if you just put money in the whole life policy and just left it there, you'd go out of business, but that's not how you make money. What does the bank do to make money? They lend the money out, don't they? The second you're there at the bank making a deposit, giving up control of your money, that bank right over in those glass cubicles is lending your money out to somebody at a higher interest rate than what the bank is paying you. So why couldn't you just do the same exact thing? Instead of putting your money in their bank, we put your money that you save in your bank. Your bank is the machine. The machine is a specially designed and engineered whole life. I know I'm repeating myself, but I'm trying to get you to memorize this so you understand that I'm not talking about a regular whole life that you bought from your broke ass brother-in-law. This is a specially designed and engineered whole life that is built so different than the whole life sold from the insurance store that you wouldn't even recognize it until now. So we're gonna put the money in the whole life. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna find a way to move that money out. And how are we gonna move that money out? We're gonna put it in and we're gonna find a place for that money to go to work for us. Let's do what a bank would do. They would lend that money out to somebody that wants to buy a car. So, hey, I bet you any money, you have a car, don't you? 
And now let's go one layer deeper. That car that you have, is it bought and paid for? Some of you are gonna say yes in the comments right now. If your car is bought and paid for, put yes in the comments. If your car is financed through a, another person's bank or a traditional bank, in the comments right now, put someone else's bank. And if you lease your car, well, shame on you, but anyway, put lease in the comment. There's really three ways to buy a car. You can pay cash, you can finance it with a bank, or you can lease it. I mean, there is a fourth way. You can always steal the car, but don't do that. But anyway, what we're going to do is we're gonna change where our savings goes first, and we're gonna put it into our bank. I don't care how you put money in the bank, could be monthly, could be quarterly, could be annually. That's however you save money. Now, when we save up enough in our bank, what we're going to do is we're gonna pay off that car loan, or we're just gonna buy a new car, whichever fits your fancy. And when we do that, remember I said, when we borrow money from our bank, what do we have to do? Well, we have to treat our money the same way we would treat any other bank's money, which means you have to pay your bank back, principal and interest. You're not gonna steal from your bank, right? No. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna make monthly payments back to your bank. How much? Well, how I do it is I just find out what a bank would charge me for the car. If it's $500 a month for a five-year loan, I just pay myself $500 a month. But there's a big difference because you're probably thinking, well, wait a second, I saved up enough money to pay cash for the car and now I'm making payments for the car? You're making payments back to your bank, which means every month, if you were to make $500 monthly payments, that $500 is available to you to use the very next day and make that money go to work again. But see, there's something we missed in this whole process. The one thing that brings this whole thing together and makes the infinite banking concept, the choice of almost every wealthy individual out there, and not only wealthy individuals, guess who else uses this? That's right, traditional banks are the number one purchasers of this. Look it up, it's called Bully, B-O-L-I. Why don't you Google that and then get back to me and let me know what you learned. I bet you it wasn't what you thought. So now you've got this money, you put it into the whole life, you took it out as a loan, you bought the car, and now you're making $500 monthly payments back to yourself. There's one final thing that happened during this. See, when you took that loan from your bank, the loan wasn't your money. It was the insurance company giving you part of your death benefit. That means whatever money you had in your machine the whole life, that money's still there. And that means that money's still there earning interest and dividends uninterrupted. Now do I have your attention? So everything I just explained about that car, if you really look at what just happened, I'll tell you what happened. First off, you learned how to get all the money back for every single car you will ever buy, drive, and own. The second thing that happened is you took back control of your money because you became the bank. So now no one else is in control of your money but you. Third, you earned uninterrupted compound interest on that money and you will continue to earn uninterrupted compound interest on that money for the rest of your life. Folks, if this works for cars, what else does it work for? Everything. But most importantly, there's a simple yet easily forgotten thing that people do with the infinite banking concept. And this is it. They forget to treat their money the same way they used to treat the traditional bank's money. In other words, they steal from their bank. You have to be an honest banker. If you're going to make this system work, then don't steal from your bank and be an honest banker. It's that simple, folks. It's not hard. It's just a change in the way you think about money. But I got some good news. I didn't come up with this. This has been around for hundreds of years. This might be your first time hearing about this. Maybe it's your 50th time hearing about this. But if it's your 50th time, I got to ask, why haven't you started this? That's the first question. So down in the comments, if this is your first time, write first. If this is your 50th, write 50, but then give me an excuse or a reason why you haven't started yet. Because now is the time. Because the only time you have is right now. So real quick, let's just do a quick recap of those five things I said. First off, I explained the infinite banking process, okay? What it is, it's not a product, it's a process. The second thing I did is I explained how simple this is. All you're doing is taking back the banking functions in your life. The third thing we talked about is the machine, the thing everybody wants to talk about, the Campbell soup can. The machine is especially designed and engineered whole life. And I gave you an explanation of that. The fourth thing we talked about is I gave you an example of getting all the money back for every single car you will ever buy, drive, and own. And the fifth thing, and most importantly, is you must, must be an honest banker and treat your money the same way you treat the traditional bank's money. If you follow those simple five steps, you can't lose. Because if it works for cars, it works for boats. If it works for boats, it works for planes. If it works for planes, it works for islands. So where are you at in your life financially? This 
works. If you liked this video, then you're gonna love that one, the money multiplier. It's gonna teach you in depth how this concept works. My name's Chris Noggle, and I'm here to teach you how to be your own bank.